Liverpool have been smart in the transfer window to add depth. And they did that with Diego Jota, another January transfer window signing. They're using the market to just, just intelligently in summer and in the January transfer window. And it's, it's making all the difference. It's yielding good fruit. I think you could make the case that they have four of the best 10, probably, probably even less than 10, four of the best 10 forwards in the Premier League. Mm-hmm. Luis Diaz is playing so well. I mean, uh, we saw him at, saw him at, on, at Wembley on, on Saturday and he, he is a joy. He's the sort of player that, you know, has you laughing in your seat. He's playing so well that he's keeping, keeping Diogo Jota out of the team. Mane's doing the same. You know, Salah is, is back, back among the goals and surely be running back into form soon. You know, that is an awe-inspiring array of options. And, you know, further back, you've got Thiago in, in the form of his life since coming to Liverpool at the very least. Um, you know, Fabinho, Henderson, there were significant, you know, he made two changes in key areas um, with Joel Matip and and uh, Jordan Henderson coming in. And Liverpool were better, if anything, than they, they were in in taking apart City. This this team is, is in the groove. I still think... They had the tougher run in. I still think, you know, not just uh, not just the the Merseyside derby, which I think they'll find quite easy, but Newcastle, Tottenham, with something to play for. I still favour favour City, but right mm. now, Liverpool have got the weapons to win every single game between now and the end of the season. I'm glad that you mentioned Liverpool's attacking array because I was going to save this question to last minute, but I may as well throw it in now. Normally around these kind of big games, you see a lot of stuff going around on social media, like how many players from one team would get into the starting 11 of the other team. And I think it's a legitimate question we can ask at this moment in time about, you know, this United side, you know, how many of those players would get anywhere near, uh, you know, the Liverpool, maybe even squad, let alone starting 11? None. Absolutely none. Yeah. <laughs> it's not even close. <laughs> and I, if you have that United squad at full fitness, it's still none. And I, I think we can take maybe three or four that kind of like get off the two or two or three that get off the bench. Like mm. Bruno Fernandes is just really fallen off a cliff. Uh, I have to say, I, I think he's been quite poor this season, even though the numbers look good. I think it's a lot. There's a lot of wasted possessions that come in in creating those numbers. Um, that midfield. I I was thinking this. You know, I mean, I'm sure JJ, you'll you'll have your views on Paul Pogba as well. But when he came off, and I feel like maybe that's the last we'll see of Paul Pogba in a Manchester United shirt. And it was him being subbed off, having spent ten minutes next to Nemanja Matic, who wants to go but should have gone years ago and probably shouldn't have been signed in the first place because he was too old and signed just for Jose Mourinho. And I just thought, have we ever seen Paul Pogba put in a position to play like the Paul Pogba we saw at Juventus, like the Paul Pogba we sometimes see with France? Has he ever, and his career is now like, you know, he's looking at his post-prime years coming around the bend soon. And I don't think we've ever in a Manchester United shirt seen a run of games where Pogba has been put in a position to be his best self. He's not blameless, but like for me, most of the blame goes to United. And I know I veered off track there, but he's another that you would think. And certainly a few years ago, Klopp would have would have surely been dying for a player like Pogba, but probably doesn't get in their squad now. Well, I, I want to address the Paul Pogba scenario and, and situation it's it's player and club alike that are at fault for this i think of the distraction of the contract situation will he sign won't he sign and ole was getting some of the best out of paul pogba that any manager has gotten from him for a stretch you saw him play in a diamond midfield which juventus in that last run in 2015 when they made the champions league final they played the diamond midfield they played in the Champions League final. They played in the semifinal at Diamond Midfield. Paul Pogba playing on the left-hand side. Ole put him on that side. And you started seeing glimpses of that magic. That first game of the season, Paul Pogba playing in that box-to-box role, playing with freedom. The first game under Mourinho, where they, they just went, they ran riot. You saw Paul Pogba, the flashes of Paul Pogba. Paul Pogba's biggest out is the French national team. At the end of the day, he's a World Cup champion. And he can save himself for the World Cup. He's, he's going to be in Deschamps' plans no matter what. And now, has he earned it this year? Absolutely not. Because of injuries, because of form, 
because his mind is somewhere else because of pending contract stuff. I think Paul Pogba is still a world-class player. I think a world-class player is in there, but sometimes you just have to cut your losses as players and club. I think this Paul Pogba scenario is dragged on way too long. I think if you were going to cut your losses, last season would have been the best possible time. You came in second place. You got you squeezed out just about every bit you're going to get out of a player like that with everything that's gone on at Manchester United, and then you move on. Now, regarding the question at hand of which players make the bench, oh, man, how do you say hell no in different languages, Spanish, French, you know, uh, JJ, you can help with French. I, I think across the board, <laughs> it's just hell no. Um, it's, they couldn't even, players would be struggling to make the 18 for Liverpool in their current form. Now, these United players in form, these United players on their any given day, Bruno Fernandez definitely, I think, would make it in form. Um, he's a player that gives you something different. But since Cristiano Ronaldo has come to Manchester United, Bruno Fernandez seems a shadow of himself. There's a correlation there. When Ronaldo hasn't played, Bruno Fernandez is a goal scoring midfielder that shows up because the focus of the team isn't get the ball to Cristiano at all costs. A Cristiano Ronaldo that's scoring gold and making things happen for himself is a limited Bruno Fernandez. Yeah, that's uh, I'm, there's some really good points for, from both of you. I do agree with Mike uh, regarding Pogba. Uh, and it feels really frustrating because it's almost like you knew that this was going to be the outcome with Pogba way, uh, you know, before this point in the season. I mean, even before the winter transfer window, I think we all knew that Pogba was almost certainly going to be leaving United uh, at the end of the season at the very latest. So, you know, now we've we've got to look at the task at hand, you know, at the risk of turning this into just a, uh, a, a chat all about Manchester United and their problems, you know, Eric Ten Hag, obviously we're still waiting for official confirmation, uh, but he is going to be uh, at some point the the new manager of Manchester United. That's what we're we're waiting for to happen. You know, looking at this this situation that he's going to walk into, this mess. You know, where does he even start with all of this, James? Uh, go to RB Leipzig. <laughs> <laughs> I. That that I, you know, he he's a coach. I think we should say first of all, he's worked in a really coherent structure at Ajax that finds top young talent and gives them to him, and they fit into a predetermined style of play and a fashion. And with that, he creates magic. You know, we what we've all been sitting sitting here for the whole first half of the season. We were all raving about Ajax, and annoyingly, we were made to look a little foolish by Benfica. But you still can't argue with you know the performances with the results over years. And you know, taking one team to the uh, Champions League semi-finals, then coming back and doing it again. If I were Eric Ten Hag, and obviously he he must feel he has these assurances. If I were at Ten Hag, I would not have taken this job because United aren't in a position to employ a coach like him. They have not got a structure in place and they will damage his reputation. 